But who cares? Hey guys. So one of you's brought something to my attention that was quite interesting. And not only did you email me about it, but you even sent me a set. Now, I don't know if most of you already know about this particular collection. I, for one, had no clue, which is usually the case. I'm usually like the last person to know about anything. But anyways, the collection I am talking about is the new Buffalo Silver Select Edition series. So the set that my puzzle pal Christy sent me is called Confection Street. And this is from Buffalo's Silver Select Edition. And this one is 1,000 pieces and it is 26.75 by 19.75 inches when it's completed. And this image is by none other than Charles Wisaki. Now this puzzle set comes in a fantastic box. And it even states on the back that it's considered a giftable package. It, it's a beautiful box. It has silver accents on it, is nice and solid. And it's kind of like one of those that you got to pull the little box out from the insert. It's, it's beautiful. And this set does include a full color diagram, which of course, you know, is a huge plus for me. And it is something that Buffalo tends to put in all their sets anyways. And aside from the fact that this image is by Charles Wasaki, which is one of my favorite artists. I mean, I mean, just look at this image. You know this is the kind of place I wanna be hanging out at. I'm telling you, just looking at this image, I pretty much planned out my day. You know my first stop in the morning is gonna be the pancake house here. Gotta get me some good pancakes for breakfast. Then you know the next stop is gonna be the hot dog shop. And then after that, I'm just gonna keep going down to the next house. We got popcorn, chocolates, root beer, donuts. Then I'll stop for some pizza for dinner. And then hope that this cart here is still there for dessert so that I can have some cakes and, and cookies and probably some ice cream as well. I'm pretty sure after spending a day on this street, I'm going to end up with very severe indigestion. But who cares? Now, if you have heard of these Silver Select Editions and if you've tried them, make sure you hit that like button. And let me know down below, what have your experiences been like with these sets? Now, in terms of the whole process here, I'm kind of figuring like... Honestly, I think this is going to be a fairly easy image to complete. Each house here has pretty much its own color scheme going on. I'm kind of thinking that the hardest part of this set is basically going to be the trees. I kind of feel like this is going to be an overall easy image for me to complete. But then again, who knows? This can take me, you know, a month to complete. And, you know, there goes what I said, right? Is the Silver Select Edition better than the basic ones that you get? I, I don't know. But you know what, guys? I'm never going to know until I finally open this up. And I am too excited to get started. So you know what? Let's get busy. All right. This is way too exciting. So this box does have one sticker on the side here. So let's tear that off very carefully so that we don't, you know, have any damages here. Okay, that was simple enough no damages let me see if i can pull that out very carefully there we go all right we'll save that for later now let's let's slide this open Ooh, this i love this box this box is like so solid let's see here oh we got ourselves our beautiful poster look at that that's a great size reference image let's put this on the side we need this for later. Here's the, the bottom part, the, well, the insert of the box. Oh, hello there. And, oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Guys, do you see what I see here? Oh my goodness. It comes in a resealable bag. Thank you, Buffalo, for, for making this happen. All right, let's get these pieces up. Definitely save this beauty for later because we can use it again. All right, here are the pieces. Now, I do very much remember enjoying my first Buffalo experience, and I really did like the quality as well. We do have a very nice clear print here. The colors are very vibrant. And as you can see there, there is quite a bit of gloss to this. So just keep note of that. I'm putting quite a bit of force on these tabs. Of course, not too much beastly force. This is quite strong. And you know what? 
I feel like I need to open up one of my basic buffalo sets and let's do a quick comparison here. You guys remember that one, right? And overall, the size is pretty much the same. Yeah, there doesn't look to be much difference with glare, so that's the same. I feel like the strength of these pieces are pretty much the same. But I will be curious to see if there's any difference with the fit of the pieces, how it holds together. Is it gonna hold as well as the basic Buffalo sets? Cause as you can see here, and if you remember, I was able to put this in sections very easily. So we shall see, right? This is honestly super exciting because I have not done a Buffalo set in quite a while. And I'm really excited to see if there are any other similarities or differences between the basic Buffalo set and uh, the Silver Select Edition. So you know what, guys? I, I, I can't take this anymore. I need to get started. So you know what? Let me put this away. And let's get this one sorted. So this was definitely one of those instances where I think I go into it with a plan and then I kind of blank out. But anyways, once I got into the groove of it, it was pretty easy. So of course, first tray, we have the edge pieces. Second tray here, we have any pieces with people in them. Third tray is any of the grassy areas or the pavement. Third tray, I took any pieces that had any lettering in them. And I think for some of them as well, I kind of did anything with images with food in them. The next tray is for the buildings. Next tray, we have roof pieces, just plain roof. I try to keep it that way as best I could. The next tray was anything that had any detail of the trees and the balloons and the little flags. And then the very last tray, what I did was I did anything that had to do with details from the very top of the image. So we have the sky, these trees here, we have this, I don't even know what, the, what this is. It's a hot air balloon, isn't it? So yeah, wasn't too bad. Anyways, let's continue. And as I was going through all the pieces, I did come across many instances where there were bunches of pieces kind of already stuck to each other. And I had to very carefully pull these apart because they were quite tight because it was all the wrong pieces pushed into each other. And it didn't take me too long to realize that I didn't actually do the most fantastic job with sorting because as I was trying to put the edges together, I realized some of them were missing, but that's okay. I was sure I would find them eventually. We got pretty much most of the bottom done here. All the edging is done, finally, aside from one piece here, which I need to look for in the tray with the, all the sky pieces. Now I'm trying to think of my next strategy here. I'm um, trying to figure out what I'm gonna do next. So looking at this image, I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is put together whatever pieces I can from this tray with all the lettering and wording and kind of the little foods and whatnot. Do those first and then maybe start going at the little buildings here. So in order for me to do that, what I'm probably gonna end up doing as well is kind of resorting this tray and try to group together all the similar colors and patterns and go from there, all right? So, all right, let's continue. So I did a quick resort here of the tray that had pieces for all the buildings. So what I did was I kind of just separated it into little piles around each of my trays here. So I kind of have a blue pile here. We got purples, pinks, some window pieces here that I don't know where exactly they go and so on. You, you get what I'm trying to say. So hopefully this should help me get through the buildings fairly quickly. So let's continue and let's see if it works. All right, well, that wasn't too bad. I found the buildings to be quite fun to piece together. It was a little tricky at times because I guess it's my lighting. Some of the colors look very similar to each other. But other than that, um, pretty darn good progress. Got the main areas of the buildings down. Now all we have to do is get the tray that I have here with the remaining pieces for the buildings and it's also the roof as well. We've got a lot of the trays empty now so you know what we're doing good. Good progress. Let's continue. So 
sometimes if you come across a challenging area in a puzzle, and I've only noticed this with some puzzle brands, but if you look closely, sometimes they tend to have kind of like a pattern going across the piece, kind of like lines almost. And if you could see, I don't know how well you can see it actually, going horizontally, you turn it this way, it kind of looks like those lines are going vertical. And when you want to try to kind of maybe organize your pieces, either lining them up by shape or by colors, what you can do is take a look at this pattern here, make sure it's going horizontally because that's kind of like how all the print is on all these pieces. And that's how you know how the piece is going to fit. You can also see it here on this piece. You can see that horizontal line going across it as well. See vertical, horizontal. So this piece is either gonna sit like this on the image or it's gonna sit this way. And all the pieces line up that way as you can I don't know if you how well you can see it but it's all lining up so as you can see with these three pieces I'm I know now that these are gonna sit either this way on the image or that way on the image not like this all right so that's probably a little tip for you to use in case you're having an issue like this but again not all puzzle brands kind of have this look to them this kind of print on them so have a look at what you're working with and you know you're not going to see it on all the pieces obviously this one is super dark this is like black almost and you're not going to see well kind of maybe a little bit in the light there i hope everything i just said made some sort of sense let's move on okay so i was going to stop puzzling because I got to be somewhere very soon but I couldn't help myself so I decided to take the tray with all the tree pieces and basically kind of go through each one and resort it. So I broke the tray with all the tree pieces into three separate trays and what I did was I took all the pieces out that just had the balloon string to them, laid them all out flat so that I could see them a little better. Then over here what I did was I took all the tree pieces that had any specific detail to them. You could see a lot of pieces here with smoke from the chimneys, I have some pieces with flags, and some of these do have balloon lines but what I did was if it had something else other than that I put it on this tray. And then the last tray that I did was just all balloons. And as I was putting them in the tray, I was kind of piecing them together already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this all down on the puzzle itself, get these done. And then I think I'm going to go and attack the sky pieces and probably do pretty much the same thing in, in terms of resorting. Anyways, let's move on. So piecing all the balloons on the trays made the process a lot easier. All I did was use my puzzle scoop to kind of transfer them over to the image. Then I just had to fill in the gaps with the balloon strings and the rest of the tree pieces. And I did decide to do the same thing with the tray with the sky pieces. I resorted it into I think about three or four piles and went on from there. And I knew this was going to be the most challenging part of the puzzle. These wispy trees in the sky, I felt like they took me forever. But I still feel like if I didn't resort the trays, it would have taken me a heck of a lot longer to complete. This puzzle took me about six hours to complete. The image had a good mix of easy areas and challenging areas. And overall, it was of course a lot of fun. But was the overall quality of this Silver Select set any different from the typical Buffalo sets? It was kind of hard to tell apart any major differences between the two. Now, early on, the only issue that I really had or noticed was the fit. And at times, it did feel a little bit on the loose side. And in a way, it kind of made it a bit crumbly at times. And again, that's comparing it to my first experience with a basic Buffalo set. Because really, I don't remember that occurring in my last experience. I thought maybe it was the thickness of the piece. And I did measure it with a caliper and there was like just a hair's difference. And it was the Silver Select that was just a hair thicker, which is nothing really. And they might even be the same because I know my husband's caliper isn't the greatest. So who knows, this might just be a one-off. It could just be the way this particular Silver Select set was cut. I'm not sure. It is something that I will be noting the next time I try one of the Buffalo Silver Selects. Now to find any differences between the Silver Select and the basic Buffalo sets, 
I tested it fully. I did the pickup test. I even put it to my storage test and it came apart fairly easily and fairly in one piece, you know, with the occasional two to three pieces falling out. And I wobbled it around and it still surprisingly held together. It passed. Now both collections have the same level of glossy coating and the piece size is pretty much the same. So with all this information, overall, you're pretty much getting the same experience. What you're really paying a few bucks more for these Silver Select sets is really the luxurious packaging. And let's not forget, of course, that amazing resealable bag that no other company seems to want to provide you with. But again, if any of you do have experiences with this particular collection, let me know down below in the comments, what have your experiences been like? Now, if you saw my last video, you already know that I have two of the Seiko Silver Select Editions. And I'm really looking forward to one of them because it is, of course, my absolute favorite, Disney Thomas Kincaid. You know I love that stuff. But if you want to hear what I have to say about those particular sets and you're new here, be sure that you're subscribed. And if you're looking for a place to share your own puzzling experiences with other puzzlers, I do have a puzzling community that you can join. And I'll leave a link in the description box down below that'll direct you to where you can join. Well guys, I need to get a move on with some other puzzle projects. So I hope you are all doing well. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.